Now, um, and we'll, we'll mention Brexit in another context now in a minute. There are some really exciting new routes opening up, though, from Ireland this year, including direct flights to Tel Aviv, Rhodes and Menorca, to name just a few. So Owen Corrie, editor of Travel Extra, is here to tell us all about them. Good afternoon, Owen. Good afternoon, Brendan. Let, let's just, we, we, we won't stay on Brexit too long, but before we look at those new routes... Um, we look at some of the issues facing the travel and the aviation sectors and m- m- how they will impact on the, the listeners and the Irish consumers. So if I may Brexit, finish, is that finish, going to affect uh, our travel? Uh, it will indeed. And I'm going to come in on Ronan's point there. What isn't also representative is that 37% is not a landslide. Uh, when you put the two rem- uh, leave parties, this is something that's been pointed out by a few people, but hasn't got a lot of noise. Their their grand total is 43%. Um, 57% of the British in voters in that election voted for parties that wanted to stay in the European Union. So the first sure this the post, was always going to be the case when the they allowed him to post system is the problem. They allowed him to really re-run run a referendum where he didn't problem. have to win it. He <laughs> only needed to get 40%. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, going to how, how's it going to affect our, our mini breaks? That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to affect uh, Britain's mini breaks massively. The uh, European aviation industry has been looking with uh, a very, very jaundiced eye, even as, as much as the rest of um, the world has been looking at what's going on on the shenanigans in Britain and they've given extensions as the deadlines came and the deadlines were missed for an aviation agreement. Okay, we can have the same aviation terms. They've also put in a very interesting clause that it can be unilaterally dropped um, immediately overnight by the European airspace regulators and the European aviators uh, should they chose to do so. But what that does is it allows British Airlines access to the rest of Europe under our existing Open Skies Agreement. Open Skies, there's an entire generation have grown up with it. For those who didn't uh, grow up with it, I remind you what used to happen. Every single flight had to be a bilateral agreement between two governments. It meant that the national airline, it was always national airlines, were allowed to fly Ireland to France and France to Ireland. The fares were virtually carved up uh, between the two airlines. People paid £240 to go to London. Open Skies came in the 90s, one of the big beneficiaries of Open Skies. Lots of airlines scrambled to get the benefit of it. One of the big beneficiaries was Ryanair. What they did was revolutionised transport for a whole generation of Irish people, cheap flights. What Michael O'Leary, who is uh, heads up Ryanair, says is that one of the benefits that the Europe uh, of Europe that Britain, British ordinary British people, those vi- people who voted uh, uh, to leave the European Union, have enjoyed without even realising it is cheap flights. And he says that there is a great likelihood, particularly when you have governments with big national airlines like the Germans and the French, that they will use the new rules to punish. Britain and cut off aviation access to their cheap flight, their cheap holidays in Benidorm. Those uh, satellite channel programs about Benidorm might be a good casualty of that. But anyway, what will happen uh, for us is we depend quite heavily. We have about forty per thirty to f- late thirty percentage of our flights are to and from Britain. So should the aviation agreements come to a halt, that leaves a huge. Big problems for not just the Dublin routes to British uh, regional airports, of which we have a huge number, yeah. but also our regional airports. It's a big uh, question mark uh, to use. And the is, cliche, that, is that a big everything. chunk of our tourism? Uh, it's a huge chunk of our over. tourism. It's more than a half, it's a. It's not half quite half our tourism, but let's say of our eleven million tourists that come into the island, four and a half million will come from Britain. Um, if you, if anything happens, that aviation. There is no other, or their ferry services can handle maybe two and a half, three million passengers. But we are very, very vulnerable to uh, things going wrong with the aviation agreement. And the, as things stand, there is a, sh- a 12 month extension on the existing agreement all to be renegotiated, hugely complicated and no start in that negotiation. And if we've learned anything is that anything can happen. Is there an opportunity for us here at all? A huge opportunity for Ireland to be set themselves up as the gateway to Europe for North America. The, our second biggest tourist market, about 2 million of our tourists come in from North America, from USA and Canada every year. A lot of them come in, base themselves in England. It's friendly, it's English speaking. They don't have to get their head around too much and use it to base their travels further on. We've terrific service. We've 200 uh, routes from Dublin Airport to European Airport. So we could actually uh, slide ourselves okay. in as the place uh, for 
to base yourself on your way into uh, the rest of Europe, especially as um, bar- barriers of entry become complicated. Uh, they, t- they will probably not be that complicated if you have a UK passport. Um, but if you have a, 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 f- a passport trying to n- navigate your way into Britain and on into Europe or from Britain into Europe, it could become complicated. It's one of the many Brexit unities that uh, we have okay. coming up and <laughs> we haven't uh, probably be- itemised enough of them or, or um, shouted enough about them. Okay, years. back back to the um, travel and aviation industry. Now, obviously, uh, as it always does at a gathering like this, this year, the environment has come up. I suppose a lot of people make the point that like the, the this hasn't really hit aviation yet, has it? Are, are there are there the taxes coming down the tracks there that are going to hit that hard? Almost certainly. And this is going to be bigger than Brexit in terms of uh, our aviation industry is huge. It's bigger than the size of the island. We not just, I mean, on Christmas Eve, Ryanair will carry, will have carried 145 million passengers during the year. That makes it the biggest airline in Europe, overtaking the Lufthansa group. What we have also is a huge uh, leasing industry based out of Ireland. So everything that happens in aviation, we are about 30% of the planes in the sky are leased out of Ireland. Anything that damages the scale and size of that industry, and we've seen a lot of damage due due to the Boeing Max uh, controversy Mm -hmm. that listeners will need no introduction to. But the next big, uh, um, the the wind is blowing uh, particularly um, harshly for aviation at European level. It's quite clear from the Ursula von der Leyen Commission, they only mentioned tourism once in their entire draft document and the uh, uh, first uh, sort of statements of intent that the aviation is going to be uh, treated a little bit more harshly than it has in the past. There's talks about taxes on fuel. There's also talk talk much more seriously for Ireland because as I say you you have to either fly here or swim here or sail here. Um, They're talking about uh, putting on um, individual governments are putting on uh, taxes. The Scandinavians have already done so. Uh, the Belgians and the Dutch are talking about it. The French are, are on the brink of doing so and it looks like it's it'll happen gonna, in Germany. Is this going to bring us to the end of the, the, that, the glorious window there of 20 years where people were flying around the place willy-nilly and mini breaks in Eastern Europe and all the rest of it, winter sun, all of it. Conceivably, because two things will happen. Uh, the fares will go up. Uh, it will disproportionately hit the low fare airlines, which are Ryanair, EasyJet and Wizz. Uh, and it will be sort of seen as a bit of protection for the Lufthansa's and Air France's of the world, which is a bonus for those governments. The second thing that will happen is airlines will look at the viability of the routes. And a lot of those, uh, you know, in the if back in the old day, people flew from big hub to big hub. You flew to Paris, you got off and you went on to Nice or whatever. The real growth in Europe has been point to point from smaller airports to smaller airports. Amazing routes like that Kerry and Knock have got to uh, Cologne and places like that. So all of those routes are only viable with uh, because of the low tax environment in aviation. If that changes, airlines will look at those routes, start chopping back on them. They're, they will be cautious. It won't be the consumer who will decide. It will be the airlines that will decide. And we could say we could end up okay. with our West of Ireland, uh, l- uh, small lush deans and B&Bs in the West of Ireland, small restaurants, feeling the impact of a movement that they conceivably agree with an environmental movement. The aviation people are saying our flights are greener than they've ever been let us at it, but I'm not sure that argument's being heard. Okay, so time is not on our side then as regards getting in a bit more travel. Tell us about the new routes that we have uh, out of Ireland this year. One of the things that's happened is that we have felt slightly fewer of them and the, one of the, the immediate cause of that is that Boeing would have expected 58 new Boeing uh, 737 Maxes next year. They are, we're talking about 30 a uh, couple of weeks ago now, they're talking only about 10. So we had 35 of these last year, we have about 24 next year, but but the good news is there's some really interesting stuff in there. Uh, the bottom of the boot of Italy, everybody can visualise that in their map. Uh, Brindisi is one of the new Aer Lingus routes. It's a particularly good value uh, side of Italy to go to Sardinia. And, and Puglia, Puglia is just uh, absolutely Puglia is absolutely fabulous, gorgeous. Yeah. Sardinia, um, now, never as popular as Sicily. And uh, we, t- we have very, very good access to Sardinia opening up. Thanks again to Aer Lingus next so year. So Aer Lingus are going to, back to Algero up in the ba- north Algero of Sardinia. And yeah. they're going to Rhodes in Greece as well. Okay. 
Uh, Red, our Lingus, we're planning on um, they've three North American routes every year, but they're not delivering any this year because uh, while Boeing has their problems, Airbus also has their problems, the aircraft that were to fly those routes are a little bit later than they might have been. And uh, then uh, we R- have... Ryanair have announced a new route to Menorca. Yeah, Menorca is new for Ryanair. Marseille are, are is, is new to Ryanair. One and Menorca, th- an underestimated kind of island in a lot of ways, isn't it? Uh, quieter and more family than um, uh, Mallorca and obviously Ibiza. Even though both Mallorca and Ibiza have little quiet, uh, you can mm. you can escape the madness in both of those uh, islands. But Menorca is more associated uh, with a mature family product and that's a new Ryanair route. And we'll have direct flights to Tel Aviv in Israel? Really exciting. We've had lots of uh, charter activity to the Holy Land down the years. Uh, El Al are um, introducing a flight next summer and that links up Ireland and Israel. Um, there will be a big inbound Israeli uh, market as well. Um, but obviously it's a it's a hugely historic country with every, there's no 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 matter whether you're atheistic or uh, Christian you cannot escape um, all that uh, narrative uh, yeah. of the the Holy Land and they and do say Tel Aviv is a great party town Tel Aviv well, is party c- is party central it's a beach city there's very few of those sort of major beach cities across Europe and as they say it uh, doesn't go to sleep okay Owen Kari thanks for that you're going to stay with us Owen aren't you Absolutely. and we'll take a break thank you Podcast The Marion Finucane Show at rte.ie slash radio.